you are welcome to Abrahamic Mission. Abrahamic Mission is a program that is designed to enlighten us about our the Abrahamic Mission family religion, that is in Nigeria, Islam and Christianity. We want to see the way where, where we do what we do, and the essence here is not to compare and contrast, but the essence is for us to understand and appreciate each and every one of us, the way and the reason why we do what we do. Today we are going to be discussing peace as the basis of development in our country. My name is Imam Fuad Adeyemi, and joining me in the studio to discuss the program is uh, a very big professor who is also a reverend, is also the Secretary General of our Nigeria Interreligious Council. The same thing with the Secretary General of West Africa Interreligious Council is Reverend Professor Cornelius Omanukwa. Yeah, I think yeah. I'm correct. Yeah, executive secretary. Executive of the Ex religious council. Yeah, you are welcome, Thank Professor. You. Yeah. Thank you so much. And also joining us, one special guest that many people always like to hear his voice when he talks, especially one man that has that transformed Lagos State Pilgrims Welfare Board from what we used to know it to be to one of the best run Pilgrim Welfare Board, not just in Nigeria but throughout the world. He is the chief imam of the Lagos State Assembly Secretariat and also is the immediate commissioner of Home Affairs of Lagos State. Join me in welcoming Honorable Dr. Ablati Bablaki. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are welcome. And together we'll be discussing peace as a basis for development in a nation. But before we do that, let us release to some of the messages that we've recently received. I will start with a man who says, your program is educative. I thank God for this program. We need to change right from announcing election results, giving position to those people believe they can do well. Let everyone change to develop the country. Thank you. Be trust no man. Another one says, Imam, it is like every new day is better than the past. He said, today's topic is like grand topic of all topics. Imam Shafiu and Reverend Isaac are also too wonderful. God bless Nigeria. Uh, we discuss uh, this one. Say, please, can the Muslim clarify? Imam, I want you to listen to this thing. He said, please, can the Muslim clarify this issue affecting Nigeria? I mean, the issue of fighting and the so called defense of Quran and also the issue of Al Majiri on the street. What are they doing? Thank you. Did you get the question? I should come again. He said, the issue of fighting that some people will say they are killing somebody somebody touched quran and the next thing is that they went and killed that person say what are you people doing is it, is it that is the way your religion asks you to be doing well uh in response to that i think that uh, there's a difference between those who know and those who do not know um you cannot be a muslim when you don't have knowledge many people tend to practice the religion without knowledge and you will see that even when Allah, Almighty Allah, created Adam, the first thing he did was to teach Adam. And when he was anointing Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first thing was to say, Ikra, read. So Islam places high premium on knowledge. And then all you find out about the aberrations in the society are those who claim to know the religion without knowing the religion. For example, now you see a group called themselves Boko Haram, which means book is haram, unlawful. Meanwhile, the Prophet wasallam said, seek knowledge even if it takes you to China. And you know that at that time, China was not in charge of Quran. China, it, it tells you about acquiring knowledge in all fields. Up to today, they are still not in charge of Quran. Understand? So, acquiring knowledge in all fields, about acquisition of knowledge. <laughs> so, as a chief imam, despite being a chief imam, I, I hold PhD in law. So I have master's degree in seven fields. So how can you say Islam is against knowledge? And all those who give birth to children and throw them on the streets, mm -hmm. they make a very serious error. Okay. Because what you don't have, you cannot give. Okay. These children are held in trust. That's why Prophet Sallam said you are shepherds and you'll be held accountable in respect of what has been given to you. Giving birth to children is not a lock. It is a trial. You have to train the children because when you train the children, that development can be recorded in the nation. Reverend, I can see you are just looking at him. You, yeah. know how, you don't want to contribute to that? 
No, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Okay. Mm. This one says, Imam, good day. May Almighty God bless you. This message is to your Muslim brothers, especially the youth. Please let them understand that Muslims and Christians are brothers from one father, Abraham, from Mr. Nsabasi, Baba Kalaba, Lagos. Uh, another one says, good evening, Mr. Imam. Unless we go back to respect our culture, know our know who our children interact with, the kind of movies they watch, there will be problems. You know, some of the episodes these people are reacting to, we actually discuss child upbringing. So that is why, you see, they are talking about this content. I think many people watched it and it's giving us this. This one says, thank you for your great program. Teaching our children to love and accept one another, irrespective of different religious belief, is key. Children need to be taught how to refuse and resist the divide and rule games of colonialists and politicians. My name is Thomas Odejide, a Christian with a wife and five children from Ocean State. I don't know what to say. <laughs> May God bless you for this talk. It is good to train children in the right way. I want you to open this in other channels. God bless you. Um, God bless you by Prophet Chinedu Ofoma. I think he's a prophet in the mm. church there. This one says, uh, I feel this is a blessed program so far. Bringing Muslim and Christian together to discuss our ignorance. God has given us this beautiful country to live in as brothers and sisters and make it one of the best and in the world. If at all we say we are serving the same God, please try to bring some of our highly religious leaders in this forum. God bless you. Isiaka Samuel Gune, Reverend Retire from JOS. And his, require, his request has actually been done today. He said should, we should try and bring some of the highly religious leaders. And if you are talking about highly religious leaders in this country, we have uh, Reverend Professor Cornelius Omonokwa here who is the secretary of NIREC. The executive secretary. Executive secretary, not just secretary. Of, the executive, executive secretary of NIREC. Of NIREC and the secretary means, general of West, West Africa African Interreligious, Interreligious Council. Council. Mm. So the meaning is when you are talking of religion in the whole of West Africa, it's, I don't want to call him number one, but mm -mm. he decides who is, he works with number one. Let me put it that way. Um, so yours has also been answered. And I wish... Uh, at least, is there anybody who don't know Dr. Ablatif Ablakim? Somebody like you must have heard. He had about seven master's degree as a religious leader. He's the chief imam of a national assembly, a Lagos State House of Assembly. He was also a member of Lagos State House of Assembly before. He, and he has a very big Islamic school where children memorize Quran. Many of them. In fact, the pride of what they do is the memorization of the Quran. So uh, I'm trying to react to what this man said that we should bring highly respected Malams. I want to tell you that your request is already being done. I, I just want to chip in one thing that uh, everyone must understand that we are all stakeholders. Do you know that problems snowball from these people who are talking? Everyone has a responsibility. You find out, for example, when we are talking about hate speeches mm -hmm. or talking about upbringing that you have said, mm -hmm. parental role, mm -hmm. parenting has a great role to play mm -hmm. in developing each person from their respective communities, understanding the need for tolerance, mm -hmm. understanding the need for us to respect one another. Okay. You cannot find it in any scripture where they say fight one another. Mm -hmm. There are thousands of verses in the Quran that emphasizes love, peace, and development. Okay. But followers always blame their leaders. Meanwhile, I talk more about the middle-level leader. Okay. Everyone is a leader. Okay. For example, if you cannot control your eyes, you are a follower of your eyes, you must lead your eyes to see what is right to see. That's why I say you are a leader. What you say with your mouth, you must be a leader of your mouth to choose what to say. But when you just open your mouth and say anything, anything. that you are a follower. So I urge every Nigerian to identify himself or herself as a leader first. Because if you cannot lead yourself, you won't be able to lead any Prof, other person. You, 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 did you agree with it? Well, I want to say here, because you know you have been reading all these things. As we were talking, and I was looking at my brother, 
I was just thinking of what happened to me during Christmas. What is that, sir? And I will tell you. But let me give you a prelude to that. We are talking about peace today, isn't it? Mm. And development. We get there. We're just reading messages yeah, now. Yeah, the messages. Mm. So, Probably when we get to peace, you'll tell so, us more about yeah, it. Yeah, I was just thinking of... He's talking about leaders. Mm. I was just thinking about the question of relativism. What happened was, I have a very close friend in my village. He's a Muslim. We'll be friends right from there. What's the name of your village? Irekpa. Irekpa is in... Uzarwe, Etako West. And I came to visit him. His brother is an Amadia. And as we were there, a Muslim... So I can't help you with that at the moment. A Muslim woman, woman came in. I was in their house. Mm. And I said, Salam Aleikum. Mm. And the woman now responded, Ami Aleikum Salam. Mm. That my friend just he said, what do you mean? When a non-Muslim tell you Salam Aleikum, you don't say Ami Aleikum Salam back. Then you what just, do you say? You say thank you. <laughs> you just, because you can only wish peace to your fellow Muslim. No. You know? Why I'm because this he is talking about ignorance, mm. education, mm. and of course the first word, Ikra. Mm. The big thing I think is clarification of terms. Okay. You know? Clarification of terms. Clarification of terms. Okay. Please keep the messages coming. I promise as much as possible we will be reading this message as we could. But we might not be able to read everything at the same time. But just keep listening. I assure you we'll get there. But let us go on a short break before we now come to the main topics of the day. Yeah, welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is still Abrahamic Mission. And the topic we are discussing today is peace at the bedrock of development. And joining me to discuss the topic today is uh, Dr. Abdulatif Abdulakim, who is the chief imam of Lagos State House of Assembly Mosque. Doctor, you are welcome, sir. Thank you so much. And also Professor Reverend Father Cornelius Omanokwa. I always like to pronounce that name. Yeah. Because it's, also, it's the Executive Secretary of NIREC, Nigeria Interreligious Council, and also West African Interreligious Council. It's based here in Abuja. Prof, you are welcome. Thank you very much. And the topic we are discussing, like I said, is peace as a bedrock of development. But you can also be part of this program by sending WhatsApp messages to this number or SMS. For God's sake, don't call. It is just text messages or WhatsApp messages. And the number is 070-449-4949. Again, 070-449-449. That is the number. Send your messages, send your SMS, but please and please don't call. And what we are discussing is peace as a bedrock of development. Reverend, uh, you have listened to my introduction yeah. that our country today, we have a challenge. Yeah. Nigeria is one of the best countries that God has created. Perhaps somebody might say we are too, personally, might say I'm too nationalistic in thinking, but sincerely speaking, with what I've seen in the world, there are no two countries like Nigeria. I see Nigeria as the paradise of the world on earth. And yet, we have a lot of challenges here and there. Like I always say, I don't know whether you have seen this, these uh, uh, statistics. Nigeria has the highest number of Christians in West Africa. Muslims, Nigeria has the highest number of Muslims in West Africa. So, the meaning is that whatever you think you have, you get a better one in Nigeria. And yet, we are still where we are. Many people are saying that the essence, the reason why we don't get there is because peace eludes us. Yeah. To you, Reverend, how will you define peace? In a layman's term, I'm, not yet, I'm yet to go to Bible. Law. To you, in a layman's term, you want to tell your congregation about peace. Mm. What will you tell them? Well, 
if we want to talk about peace, first of all, we have to go to the ontological foundation, mm. the anthropological foundation of the human person himself. Because with peace is, you have intrapersonal peace. That is what, in a layman's word, is mm. peace of mind. Okay. Somebody will tell you, I have peace of mind. Mm. That means I have the a, a calmness of the spirit. Did you do your first degree in UI? Yes. Okay, no wonder. Go ahead. <laughs> that is the calmness of mind. Mm -hmm. Intrapersonal peace. Mm -hmm. It is when you don't have intrapersonal peace mm -hmm. that you now have interpersonal peace. And what brings about intrapersonal conflict, which is the opposite of interpersonal peace. Mm -hmm. You need something, you cannot get it, mm -hmm. and you want to fight to get it. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you lose your peace of mind. Okay. So it means you can only give what you have. Yes. It's simple. That is summary of so, what you have just said. Like Futishin would say, if you hear a gun shot outside, mm -hmm. that gun had already been shot in the mind. Because your mind is not settled. You become schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. That is, you become a kind of double personality, like the legion. You say, I, I'm legion, but we are many. But because your mind is scattered, there are things you need, you don't have. There are things you want, you don't have. So you are not happy. Okay. Imam, if you're on the member on the pulpit, you want to, tell, you want to talk about mm -hmm. peace. To you, as an imam, what will you tell them peace is? Okay, peace is a state of orderliness and tranquility. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a process of living a life that is consistent with its creation. Peace is multidimensional and it is sectoral. There is the physical peace when you observe that things can go the normal way without any chaotic situation where people are not disgruntled and there, there's no disenchantment. Also, there is emotional peace, there is psychological peace, there is behavioral peace, there is political peace when you have political stability, there is economic peace when people trade and transactions go as expected. So you are, wait, 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 that is why you observe that the heavens and the earth, everything is peaceful. That shows that the creator is peaceful. Therefore, Peace is ensuring that I live in line with a manual, the manual that guarantees peace. If you find anybody making life uh, chaotic, the person is suffering from chaos. It is those who are restless that give birth to restlessness. You must be peaceful with yourself before you can give peace to the system. Therefore, if you have a well-defined system, like the constitution for instance where all nigerians have said we the people of the federal republic of nigeria have been resolved law is to live degree. in unity and harmony Imam, law under, is one, under one indivisible and indissoluble sovereign nation under god if we live under that preamble mm. you see that things will go ahead mm. but the moment we begin to live outside that agreed you uh, are you know a balance mm. then we, we observe a very chaotic situation you have said it as a professor, as a PhD, you have said it now. Now, let us go back to your religion. What does your religion say about peace? Well, I want to refer you to Isaiah chapter 26. Okay. The whole of that book. But I want to specifically talk about the book, the prophet Isaiah says, Trust in the Lord forever. Mm -hmm. For the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. He humbles those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low, he levels it to the ground, and casts it down to the dust. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the footstep of the poor. Mm -hmm. The path of the righteous is level. Mm -hmm. You, the upright one, mm -hmm. make the way of the righteous smooth. Mm -hmm. You know that among the prophets, you have prophet of social justice, mm -hmm. like prophet Amos. Mm -hmm. Now what brings about, I talk about intrapersonal peace. 
What brings about lack of peace in the heart of so And the many? simple meaning of intrapersonal means peace inside yourself. So, yes, you don't have peace of mind. Because before you can actually talk about peace, mm. even legally, mm. even in jurisprudence, mm. you have to talk about justice. Mm -hmm. There can be no peace without justice. Okay. And that is why the prophet Amos was always on the leaders of the people that they should make the things available. There are basic things human beings want to be happy, to have peace of mind, mm. so that they cannot rebel within them. For example, every human being needs the basic, you need, apart from what God brings, mm. the, 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 like air. Mm. Uh, for example, a man was in the hospital mm. and they fixed oxygen on him. And after some time, they removed the oxygen because he could breathe normally. He started crying. Mm -hmm. They thought that he was crying because he could not pay. And he's a, million, he's a billionaire. I did shook his head. I said, I have money. But I just realized that this uh, small oxygen you have given me, I have paid 10 million. Mm -hmm. God has been giving it to me freely all these years. I never appreciated it. What if I were to pay for the oxygen I have been breathing in? Or that is why I'm crying that God should forgive me. Now, you can imagine if the society, the family, mm -hmm. the government mm -hmm. give to each and every one of us what we think we need. Mm -hmm. the, nobody will go out of his way to go and rob somebody else. Mm -hmm. Nobody will go out of because it is easier to enjoy the fruit of your labor mm -hmm. than to go and be stealing. Mm -hmm. So the Bible is talking about let justice reign yeah. in a way and manner that the lion and the lamb can live together mm. so that there will be no social discrimination. Mm. There will be no political discrimination. There will be no economic discrimination. Our people have a saying it, I call, mm. Meaning? <laughs> Lack of equity mm. is the root of crisis and conflict. I think I should end there for, for now. Imam. <laughs> Okay. From Quranic or religious point of view, Islamic point of view, what does peace mean? Because okay. I think we need to ask you more. Okay. <laughs> the word Islam means peace itself. Okay. If I ever ask you to be a Muslim, mm -hmm. it means be peaceful. The word Islam is from Salam. It's from peace. A state of submission to Allah. And every law, without an exception, is aimed at engendering peace. Every law. If, for example, if Almighty Allah says, believe in me, don't believe in anything else. It is to ensure that you benefit from a peaceful uh, syllabus that I've given to you. Take any law. Speak the truth. If you tell lies, you're not going to get peace. But if you are truthful, you don't need to memorize what you have said. Exactly. exactly. Do not formit, commit fornication. Mm. So anybody who commits fornication or adultery has lost his peace. He has lost his or her peace. Yeah. If it's adultery, if the, the husband of the woman gets you, can you have peace? For example, talking about justice, Quran chapter 4, verse 105, Quran chapter 4, verse 135, Quran chapter 5, verse 8, Quran chapter 4, verse 58. These are all verses in respect of justice. Even lawyers, if you go to Quran chapter 4, verse 105, it says, do not be an advocate to the wrongdoer. In respect of people of other religions, he will tell in Quran chapter 2, verse 156, like Rafi did, there is no compulsion in religion. Do not force anybody to accept this religion. In Quran chapter, in chapter 10, verse 99, he says, will you force people to accept this religion? So if, if the Almighty Allah says, don't take alcohol, you, it is for you to have peace of mind. Now, look at coronavirus. Now, in the health sector, there is no peace. Why? Because we took for granted the law of God. He says, don't eat this. In Quran chapter 2, verse 166, about, he says, Yeah, you are nurse. Oh, you, oh, you mankind. Eat only what is lawful and pure so that your system can have peace. Your digestive system, your respiratory system, your reproductive system, every part of you. Now, now you eat what has been made unlawful. Blood is made unlawful. Why? You know, some people after slaughtering the ram, they collect the blood and they cook. 
God says it's unlawful. Why? You will lose your peace because all the diseases troubling you is inside the blood. For example, you want to test whether you have typhoid, you test the blood. So why are you drinking and eating the blood of the animal? Now, don't eat an animal that died by itself. It's to give you peace. Why? Do you know the illness, the disease that killed the animal? Don't eat pork. There are several verses in the Bible and in the Quran about not eating pork. Because Prophet said, this is an animal that has too many germs, you know, and they can be very injurious to your health. So what we are saying generally is that being, I mean, being at peace, that's why they say, Allah manta salam, oh Allah, you are the Lord of peace. Wa minka salam, peace is from you. Wa ilika yaruju salam, and peace is back to you. So the world is not at peace because of the flagrant disregard of the injunctions of Allah. Okay. So, so you see people who claim that we look at, you see a lot of similarities in what somebody who follows the Bible will do with somebody who follows the Quran. They were agreed on, on terms. When it comes to trust, they say we are the same. When it comes to honesty, they say we are the same. Integrity, we are the same. Do not deceive, we are the same. Don't fornicate, we are the same. So you talk about peace, where people recognize the right of one another to live. For example, now, people, Nigerians read constitution without understanding what is there. Section 38 says, you are free to practice your religion. You know, just as the Quran has said. So, anybody who now frustrates anyone from practicing his or her religion is the cause of all this crisis. I can tell you, why do we say women should cover, for instance? It is so that you can have peace as a man. If you don't see it, you don't think of it. So what you cover, you know, you have saved members of the society from the evil of what you will have revealed. Okay. So the person who goes her way, who covered herself, and several people cover in Nigeria, masquerade, they cover. Ayo, they cover. Uh, Sangbeto, they cover. Why is it that Muslim? Sangbeto, sorry. Uh, San oh, you know, mm -hmm. Those ones are masquerades. You understand? They all cover. But when you now see a Muslim who covers herself. And the Christian sister, is the Catholic. They cover. They cover. You understand? Decently. So when you now see somebody who mm -hmm. cover, you say, no, 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 we don't want this, this religious extremism. That is a violation of the constitution. Allah says, allow each person. I recognize madness. The right of everybody to exercise his religion's belief is your right fundamental human right and nigeria recognizes that Imam. so long as your madness Imam. does not affect any other person, any other person. Okay. you want to do something yes go ahead. you see there is what we call the footstep of the master the foot the footstep of, of the, the master. master okay jesus is the prince of peace, peace. Yeah. it had already be it has already be prophesied by isaiah mm -hmm. that jesus a prince of peace will come and because Jesus is the Prince of Peace, he said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for, for they, they shall, shall be called the children of, of God. God. Okay. Now, how did Jesus Christ want us to follow him as a Prince of Peace? Jesus Christ was born in a, at the time where there was discrimination. Today we hear people say religious persecution. But so for, for some others, discrimination is a form of uh, persecution yeah. you know so there was no relationship between the samaritans and the jews and i talk about relativism today what peace and love mean for the jew is not what it meant for the gentiles yeah, <laughs> for the jew when the jews say love your neighbor as yourself he is not saying love the samaritan as yourself and that is why Jesus Christ came and even gave the parable of the good Samaritan. You get it now? Then it means Jesus removing the, the relativism. Yes. Jesus, Jesus the relativism. He, he removed the relativism. relativism you in know, the... Jesus wanted, that is why you discover that the gospel of Luke, mm -hmm. Luke wrote for the whole world that Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, is the Lord of Lord for the whole world. Matthew's narrative was just it was for the Jews to understand. Whereas Luke wrote for the whole world to know that the Jesus Gentiles is a man. You know. So, now, how did Jesus Christ practically show in the context of the full step of the master? Jesus Christ did not kill one single person. And so you have no right and you have no reason to say, I kill you in the name of Jesus. And you say, this person is a Christian terrorist. There is nothing like Christian terrorist because it does not exist in the, old, in the New Testament. Now, 
because Jesus Christ is the is the Prince of Peace, he expects every other Christian, his followers, to practice that. And that is why he went as far as to say, forgive your enemies, turn the other cheek. Even as he was being crucified on the cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Because forgiveness is another ingredient of peace. Yeah. If you do not forgive, you will die of asthenic hypochondriacal exhaustion. I that means in English. you will. I'm <laughs> speaking English. What I mean is that you should not forgive because anger has only one food mm. to eat: mm. the owner. Anger eats the owner. Mm. In other words, you will be you will have complications, mm. and when you don't forgive, you cannot think straight. That's true. Your reason cannot yeah. because and when you don't forgive, you mm. you fall into a ditch because you are not looking straight at what you are going. You are looking back yeah. at somebody who's after your life. That's true. That's so true. we, if, if if you follow Jesus Christ, mm. and that's what we call on the politicians, mm. Christian politicians who are Good. in government Good. to be ambassadors of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. Christ. That is Jesus Christ went beyond the Ten Commandments. Okay, and say. You know, it. This is what you were told. What I told you: do extra, yeah. don't kill anybody. And that's why Jesus came. Yes. Okay. So, by the time we are talking, for example, you know, I'm writing something on religious persecution. Religious persecution. Because religious persecution means differently to different people. When we say religious persecution, we we are not saying that the Muslims went to the mosque as a Nigeria Supreme Council to come and attack Christians. Mm. We are saying that there should be equity. Okay. There should be social justice. Okay. There okay. should be equal distribution of facility. Okay. There should be freedom of religion, like you said, okay. in the form that I can have a place to build my mosque mm. and, and I can have a place to build my, my church. church. I think you are a Christian and you are a Muslim. Reverend. Uh, <laughs> no, I want you to, to round it up. So, okay. that, uh, so if you allow me, then let me round up. Okay. So in this case, mm. peace will flow from you and me okay. into the desert, into the Sabisa into the forest ocean. to set the captives free. Okay. And know that those who are the kidnappers are the terrorists. Mm. If there was peace, mm. we could eradicate them. And okay. that calls for dialogue of social engagement. We will, we will Where get there. Peacefully, we will, get we there. will come together, we will Christians get there. and Muslims, to promote peace. Well, you know, uh, I think probably you are feeling the way I'm feeling when you have them around, the, the academicians and clergy. That is, don't, don't worry, but we'll just go on a short break. But don't go, because we'll now bring them to our own level by the time we come back. <laughs> you yeah, are welcome back. We are just joined, we are, the topic we are discussing is uh, peace as a uh, bedrock of development in our nation. Uh, if you have been with us, you see this, uh, our, our, I don't want to say the, the academic juggernaut, which we have in the name of religious or clerics in the house today. Uh, I believe if you have been listening to them, they have been telling us the meaning of peace and why it is important that we have peace, especially from the religious point of view. But our country today, you have said you are writing a book on uh, religious... Not a book, an article. An article. Please, I would love on to religious see persecution. religious persecution. Well, religious persecution to me arose from lack of peace. It is when there is no peace that we have that, especially from the, the operators. Then secondly, look at our country today. There are so many challenges we face as a nation. And these challenges are basically rooted from lack of peace, or probably the result of lack of peace. And most of the people who are in this country, both the leadership and the followers, they are all either Muslim or Christian. And from what the two of you said is that peace is ingrained inside the two religions. How come we now get to the level where we are? I will start from uh, uh, Imam. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, we are the uh, we are the sources of our own problems, mm -hmm. and we say what we do not do. You know, uh, I would rather say that it is religious persecution that leads to lack of peace, not the other way around. Okay. How now? If Nigeria as a country mm. has a constitution 
don't forget we were not friends before the, the north the south the west were strangers to one another until the colonial government came the amalgamation of the northern and southern protectorates okay brought them together that's why the nigerian system nigerian council they did not work because they did not even understand the language of one another the north had a firmly established system of government the east had a firmly established system of government the same thing with the west now you brought them together under the name nigeria now forget about all the struggles that went there where we now had opportunity because the 1922 Clifford Constitution, 46 Richardson, Mark Fasting of 1951, and Little Constitution of 1954, Nigerians were not party to the drafting of this constitution. In 1960, when we have the opportunity of now determining our own situation, we also discovered that we had not reached there because the police was still royal police, the army was still royal army, our Supreme Court was not yet the highest court in the land, until our fathers fought until we got the Republic. Now, when we now got the Republic, we now started man in humanity to man. The greatest thing to engender peace is respect. When you recognize that this is the situation in life of this person, give it to him. You will have bought him hook, line, and sinker. But the situation where somebody says, because i don't like the way you practice your religion i said it the other time i said section 38 we need to be trained about it and the subsection you see that it says that every nigerian shall have the right to practice his religion whether privately or in public whether as an individual or in community with others he or she has the right to practice to observe to manifest and propagate his religion and the subsection that follows says every no institution shall have the right to train anybody's child in a religion different from the religion of his father and another subsection says every religious institution shall have the right to establish institutions to train their members okay so what do you have now in nigeria mm -hmm. you have religious persecution how disrespect i'll start okay now go around the world mm. there's no place in the world go to america you'll be shocked at the respect they have for people of different religions okay then then in nigeria yeah i said it that even as a muslim when we draft our uniforms mm. look look at the issue of students just putting on hijab in their schools because it's an aberration in the islamic religion that when a, a girl reaches puberty mm. she wants to dress in the way that our religion says according to section 38 even i'm sorry and please don't say i caught you short yeah. even in christianity dressing I decently yes is also uh, uh highlighted in the bible i'm even saying and that we don't have issues with christians who understand this way of life that we are talking about okay we have issues with the ignorant ones mm -hmm. who forget section 42 for example something happened yesterday in a university i will not mention the university you understand we are students who have come to write exams their hijabs were being removed their hijab were being removed in a in a western university in nigeria a private university owned by the church so here if you do that why do you hate him why do you hate her the her appearance section 38 guarantees that she can put it on imam. imam let me finish let me finish okay let me you know we are talking we are talking about courses Mm -hmm. what leads to it okay it's your high level of intolerance of, of me if you tolerate me you understand mm -hmm. you have me fully okay but when you challenge what i tell you is fundamentally my religion okay you understand for example look at federal government colleges they've quickly recognized that let us sew the uniform in such a manner that it recognizes the diversities of the religion mm. and there are two main diversities a christian is okay with uh, a gown and even a beret a christian is okay with it now the muslim tells you that my hijab is my pride i don't joke with it definitely look at the case of a, a, a child i mean uh, one of these graduates of the law school when nations where you took your democracy are adjusting to the realities go and get the scotland police uniform Okay, I, want you, I want you to add this thing with you. Your, I want you to add something with your discussion now. I'm really interested. The people who are killing people, yeah, 
these people in northeast and some part of Nigeria yeah. who are killing, what can we say is the source of the reason why they are killing? So that we, we all know that northeast is one of the peaceful area in Nigeria that people love to go and people love to be. Why is it that people are killing there? What can you say? Is it the same thing you are talking that led to no, killing? No, no, so why no. Are... For example, there are solutions to every problem. No, I want to know that those, this first. Those who please. are killing mm -hmm. are not followers of Muhammad. But they are followers of who? They are not followers of Muhammad. But who are they Anybody following? can claim to be your follower without being your follower. But now, claiming... let me tell you. Mm -hmm. You know the other time when uh, our Reverend. father was talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is my prophet. Yes. In Quran chapter 2 verse 136, I must believe in Jesus. Definitely. So I wanted you to give me a shot to speak about Muhammad. Mm -hmm. The reason is this. The reason is this. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. The reason is this. No prophet of God killed deliberately in retaliation for what people are doing. Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. never killed. In Islam, nobody preaches Islam with war. But they fought in defense. If anybody comes to prof, who is holding a cutlass, God forbid he has caught the head of somebody and is coming to you. God says, if you have your gun, you blow his head. That is not killing. That is in self-defense. Go and check Islamic history. All the battles that were fought were fought in self-defense. And there are clear verses of the Bible of the Quran. The Quran says. Like, mm -hmm. Fight in the way of God. Those who fight you. I want you to relate to what's happening in the Northeast. Because uh, Reverend is waiting to talk. I want you to relate what is happening that's in what the Northeast. What, that's what I'm... It doesn't have to be Northeast. It's anywhere. No, we're talking... We, 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 Emma, listen, it, I'm Nigeria. sorry. I'm sorry. It is anywhere. You kill in the name of religion. You are not a follower of Muhammad. Okay. Because there are ways of redressing wrongs. Okay. That Almighty Allah has identified. Okay. It is not by... Who do they kill? Do they kill those who kill them? Are they not killing innocents? Are they not throwing bombs and killing people who have no relationship with them? Are they not slaughtering Muslims? Okay. They get to the mosque when Muslims finish their salat, they slaughter them. Okay. How can they say, how can you, we, one was caught, I got to Kirikiri. He said, they say it's a Boko Haram. He could not read Surah to Fatia. How can the Boko Haram not read the simplest Surah? You met the person? No, I met the person. Recently, many Christians were caught among them. These Christians, that's why when you talk about what is happening, don't relate it to religion. Okay. Because Please. a good Christian cannot be a terrorist, a good Muslim cannot be a terrorist. You have me. So don't the fundamental cause, one mm -hmm. of the fundamental causes, mm -hmm. you know, because we are not talking of solution yet, we are talking about causes. Causes. Mm -hmm. One of the fundamental causes is lack of respect for, for each other's, other's religion. Please. Now, let me just, um, you know, like I've always told people, I respect Islamic values. Because you are knowledgeable. In my area, those days, when you don't want to be cheated, mm. you go to the Muslim, for, 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 uh, pardon my language, we call them houses. Okay. We go to them, because once they tell you guys care, you can be sure that they are not cheating you. Okay. And I have a grandfather, a maternal grandfather who was a Muslim, and an uncle who was the chief imam of my village. They had a very clean heart. Remember that Jesus Christ said, it's not what goes into you. It's what comes out of you. That time, the Muslim women were repatriated from Saudi. I had a relationship with the Muslim women. That is the firm one. I wrote an article questioning the Saudi government. Why should they Treat those women the way they did. A woman from phone was a father, please don't be hard on Saudi. Some of them even wear their hijab to go and prostitute in Saudi. And what does it bring me to? Sometimes you see there is what they call the lumena and the numena, the external and the internal. I must tell you, look at uh, Martin Luther King. Mm. He said one day. My child will be judged by the content of his character. That I have a dream. And I want to tell you today, and even tell the public, what is taking me to heaven is not this Kazakh. It is the content of my character. It is even going to be worse if I commit sin with my Kazakh on my body. If 
what takes me to heaven is that I did, I, I practice, I love my neighbor, I do the work of my priest, priestly work, I did my priestly work because I have a clean mind. Because I, and what makes, qualifies you to be my friend is never because we are Christian and Muslim. There is one word, humanity, which we share together. And as Christians and Muslims, another thing we share together is that Abraham is our common father. Here, I know we are, at least let us go with a solution. No, no, we get to a solution. Okay, Just finish okay. what you are saying. So, finish what so you, you are saying. Say Take that, your time. So you could say that sometimes we deal with the externals more than we do with the interior. Today we are talking about terrorism, isn't it? Has anybody ever asked, why was there Boko Haram in the first place? Mm. What caused it? The initial manifesto, if I may use it in parenthesis, mm. of Yusuf, yeah. Muhammad Yusuf, was it to go out and kill, kill Christians and kill Muslims? No. Well, it was not used as a political talk, yes. and after which it was killed extrajudicially that these boys went on rapid. I've encountered somebody too who had one on one uh, conversation with uh, Mohammed Yusuf and uh, Ivo Shekau. We met in London, in UK. Mm. And how they were trying, so Muslim scholars were trying to de -radical, de -radical radicalize Shekau. Okay. You know? So I think what we should do together, what we should be talking about, is not whether. I wear my kazakh, which is necessary for me, <laughs> or whether you wear hijab, which is also a good thing. Our reverend sisters wear their habits, yeah. depending on the congregation. Our reverend brothers, mm. I am here with my, I'm not here with my pint. Islam and Christianity apart. Mm. If you go out naked, you are a mad person. <laughs> Naturally, you are a mad person. Even the Bible recommends that you should dress decently. Uh, a reverend was giving us an example of what happened in, when they went to Jeru, to uh, uh, pilgrimage in Jerusalem. Yes. That you can't even know the difference between Christian and Muslim with the way they dress. Yes. That they dress yes. almost the same. I said, ah, ah. And we should also bring in culture here mm -hmm. in the terms of dressing. Okay. The, the clothes we wear sometimes, like I wear very hot weather, I'm wearing suit. Mm. That is, if you are in Europe, you will not wear suit in a hot weather. Mm. For okay. example, if you are in Europe, you will not, and it is hot, mm. you will wear shoes. Yeah. But in winter, you, will, you must wear your shoes. Mm -hmm. So this is the point. Of, let us concentrate on the values that bring us together. together. As human rather, beings. As human beings, yes. okay. rather than the clothes we wear. Okay, excuse, excuse okay me, but briefly, point, because I, we don't have much. No, I just want to respond to one issue. Okay. If we go along that prof line, we will never have peace. Why? How? Because Prof is trying to think for the Muslim. How? Prof is encouraging the Muslim, don't think of the external, think of the internal. Forgetting that what you call external is too fundamental in Islam. Okay, let me... No, no, you know, no, 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 excuse me, you know. Mm. These points need to be made. Okay. I must, as a Muslim, not think for you as a Christian. Okay. I must respect what you hold as your values. You must respect what I hold as my values. Okay. Say, for example, when you talk about culture, for instance, mm. in Islam, the culture is the culture of Allah. Okay. Is the culture? It's not an Arab culture. Yes. You understand? Because you, you, you know, mm. it's not. It's not an Arab culture. Mm. For example, you take it for granted that people should not cover themselves, and psychologically, what you see influences your mind. Okay. In Islam, Imam, we... it, it, there's, there's what, what you call the hijab. Mm. Islam emphasizes the values you are talking about. The internal, it emphasizes it. But it does not joke with the external. Yes. Because as you are sitting... Can you give us a passage in the in Quran where the hijab is mentioned? Quran chapter 24, verse 31. Quran chapter 33, verse 59. Quran chapter 7, verse 26. Okay. We, we, so. I think with that, we now, we will now go on a very short break. It's becoming much more interesting. When we <laughs> come back, you will now know where we are going. We are, we're both going to a particular place. But I think you should join us to be part of this particular. The number to call is 70 When we come after this short break, we will now continue from there.
we have seen our problems. Now what do we do as a nation so that we will be peaceful with ourselves and we will be peaceful in our nation? Reverend. Yeah, I think the government's support for Christians and Muslims under the umbrella of Nigeria at a religious council mm. is a very serious solution because the Christians and Muslim leaders came together and said, we, the representatives of the two principal religions mm. in Nigeria, Islam and Christianity, mm. voluntarily decided by ourselves to come together to form an association on the 11th day of September 1999, at the association having been inaugurated mm -hmm. on the 29th day of September 1999, mm -hmm. guided by our divine regulations and the details of our Creator, mm -hmm. determined within the context of our religious to forge its religious harmony and accord. Fine. I just want to recommend that Christians and Muslims, instead of fighting one another, instead of having media war, mm -hmm. let us come together mm -hmm. and speak truth to power these people in power are either christian or muslim mm -hmm. and carry them along mm -hmm. be their spiritual directors mm -hmm. to make nigeria a better place please before i still i still leave you imam raised certain things that the dressings of some of their people the muslims that some people naturally they hate they don't want to see it even in their schools they remove it what would be your advice me my advice is that when it comes to uniform mm -hmm uniform mm. if it is school uniform mm. allow the school to use their uniform like if i'm a soldier mm. and i want to go for parade mm. i will remove this cassock okay. and wear my military dress okay. when i finish i go back to my cassock mm -hmm. let the, the soldiers let the school children let the lawyers wear the uniform that is allotted to them in their institution so that then when you go home, mm -hmm. you now can wear your religious uniform. I will still come, I'm still on you, sir. Mm. That uniform, like he mentioned, mm. that in their own culture, mm. their culture, according to him, is the Quran. Mm. That this is the way things should be done. Do you recommend that they should now have their own? Or they should, like he mentioned, example in US, he mentioned something is this which Scotland? Is this Scotland? Yeah, yeah. That even the people in police, then they still, I even learned recently that even American army does allow the Sikh to be wearing the something like you know, the Sikh, the Indian religion, now. to be wearing that something and other religious something that the, the American uh, army allows it. What advice you now give to her? Because we, what you value... Let me answer it now. Good. See, when he used the word today, respect. Okay. If, for example, now, I wear this cassock mm. to school, mm. a secondary school, mm. and the government doesn't see anything wrong with it, mm. there is no protest, mm. so be it. We have to also listen to the sensitivity. Mm. You know Nigeria is a difficult country. We, we, we have to put this in, into cognizance. You can imagine a Christian telling you that uh, uh, the, the, this is in the Constitution, mm. Islam is in the Constitution, Christianity is not in the Constitution. What I'm saying is that let there be equity, let there be justice, let us listen to the signs of the time mm. and do what mm. will not hurt the feeling of mm. the other. <laughs> let me go back to the word respect. Mm. We have to give due recognition to those in that nation when you were drafting re, uh, uniform who did you invite was there any stakeholders meeting you came up with a with a uniform that is very consistent with a particular group of people that's their way of life now another group of people <coughs> now races i mean they decide to raise observation and you say, no, 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 it's uniform. So how do you define uniform? Who came about uniform? A good nation must give respect to the stakeholders and come up with and look at the two-way solution has been solved at the federal institutions. How? For example, in the federal government college, mm -hmm. they have two sets of uniform. You pick one that is pleasing to you. And that's why you have some of our children, they use their hijab. What was the hijab? Coming, Reverend, are you aware of what he's saying? I'm, I'm following. Okay. Are you aware? I'm not aware of that. Not that aware. that okay. one is in federal they, government no, colleges. that is what happens in federal government colleges. Okay. The circular has been on several years ago. Okay. And it has been resolved. There are thousands of judgments of courts that have 
placed hijab firmly as the right of the Muslims. They will not complain if it's not fundamental in their religion. So what is the problem with you that you say that, that what is fundamental? No. How do you come about? So that's why in, in Nigeria, to agree on a thing, all those countries have peace because they are giving due recognition to, to the stakeholders. Like the uh, I, I, I mean the NIREC. I have another suggestion. And what is that? The suggestion is, I, when I was commissioner for home affairs, I was in charge of NIREC. In fact, what we did in Lagos has not been done at any level. Okay, state what was NIREC or national? I'm talking of state, state NIREC. NIREC. Mm. Lagos, no state is sponsoring NIREC like Lagos. Okay. Lagos has gone to the level of decentralizing NIREC okay. to all the local governments. Okay. And we appointed 798 seven from each religion mm -hmm. but the additional uh suggestion i want to give on nirek okay nirek should recognize the traditional rulers okay i mean the, I know the traditional religious practitioners thank you so much i think what we, we because we don't have much time i think I, i've understood what you raised and we will also discuss it more perhaps getting more uh, other fora which we do but i think what i've learned from the two of you now is we have to understand and respect ourselves and i will end up with the story one about two sentences story of the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when some Christian came for him I think they are Catholic they came to meet him in the mosque they now ask him that they want to pray it was around 12 I think they wanted to do Angelus he said when around 12 the brother said is this place convenient for you they said yes then the brother said all the Muslims should vacate the mosque for them that the they should pray, should pray inside, inside the inside mosque, the mosque. Mm. and myself too I went for a program in Washington last year we were looking for a place to pray. There is a place close to White House. They said it's a church. They converted it for Muslims to pray every Friday. I pray inside that church. And they did something for me that I will never forget. After the Juma prayer, they also organized food for the Muslims. I think I will end this one by these two instances that we all need to see ourselves as brothers. We should, the stop moment, competition. we should stop unnecessary competition. If the way Muslims used to pray, the Catholic, the Christian in that place, they accepted it. They even provided a place for ablution. So it means we need to appreciate and understand ourselves. I cannot want a Muslim should not expect a Christian to reason the way he reasons as far as his religion is concerned. A Muslim should not expect a Christian or a, a Christian should not expect a Muslim to reason the way he's reason as far as religion is concerned. The essence of Abrahamic religion is for us to understand ourselves, to know how we reason and appreciate it that way, not to compare and contrast. Until we meet next week, same station, same time, we'll still be back by God's grace. My name still remains Imam Fuad Adeyemi. Thank you so much for being there. And we know we'll still invite you back once again. <laughs>